Hey, this is another lesson for you and I'm gonna use our favorite tool, Desmos. So if you have this page or you can ask me in class, you know, what page this was from so that I can help you out. Um, but I'm definitely gonna ask that right now as you're watching the video, have another tab open that shows Desmos and practice along with me. And then pause the video every so often and maybe even think ahead for what I'm gonna show you to see if you can get to the conclusion of what's happening before I say it. That's the right way to use these types of videos. Don't listen to everything, listen to what you need and learn from what it before it's even said. Here we have a table of values and we have some what we call reference points for a function. And these are two examples of exponential functions because the X is the exponent and we're going to do some sort of transformation. And so maybe we don't specifically answer this question, maybe we do, but I'm going to show you what each of the transformations does. And honestly, at this point, after talking about absolute value functions and talking about linear uh, like like line, like y equals mx plus b, but in their different form functions, this should all feel very familiar, should feel very fluid to what you've learned in the past, okay? So I'm gonna start by graphing, and you should as well, in Desmos, f of x equals two to the x power. Wonderful example. The only better example than that that I could find would be e to the x. Oh yeah, you guys don't know about that yet. I'm assuming, right? Algebra one type content. E to the X, E is a number. A, B, C, D, yeah, E is a number. So I'm gonna use that one as my second example just because I need to expose you to one of the like most legit math concepts that is gonna be centering around your math world in the next coming couple of years, okay? But for now, in Desmos, transformations on F of X equals two to the X. F of X equals two to the X. I mean, here it is. Let me go ahead and do some stuff uh, to my Desmos screen so that you can have access to as big of a window as possible, all right? So a little messing with it here. You could follow along and do these things as well. We don't really need to see the bottom half of the graph. I mean, all of this right here is empty, unused space. Although, you know, hey, my face. But what I want you to know is that you should probably mess with like your Y axis, the interval from lowest to highest number in the wrench icon. And I'm gonna say, I don't know, negative one. I mean, why not? We wanna see enough of the X axis to know what's going on. We wanna talk about transformations. Let's do the first one. And the first one is kind of not obvious right now, but it will be obvious in a second. If I have a function G of X, and it is a transformation of f of x. Like maybe I'm going to start in another location on the y-axis than one, which by the way, you can see that if you click on Desmos right there, the little gray button like, like point pops up. And when you click on it, now you're gonna have this coordinate just kind of stuck on the screen with you, which is really, really helpful. Let's put, um, I mean, I already used a two. So let's put a three. three times f of x. And uh, I mean, they look like they're the same picture. I mean, they look similar to what it is. But the key difference is that for f of x with a y-intercept of 1, now we have a new y-intercept of 3. To some extent, there's like this idea of tripling the amount. In fact, that's what that's doing. Every y-coordinate is now getting multiplied by 3. We can see this is one of the features that Desmos does. I'm gonna use the gear and I'm gonna click on that little button that says create table. And now we have a bunch of points actually plotted on the graph and we can click on them too. So we know that they're interactive. And if I wanted to, I could mess with them over here. I could, you know, type other numbers and get some responses there that are super helpful. Can't leave an entry blank, but there we have it. This is the point or collection of uh, points for function f and then over here underneath my name so let's move my, my screen one more time out of the way um, I'm gonna click on the gear and then I'm gonna click on table and now I see that this point directly above that one has a y value that's three times the difference click on a different collection of points like one two that's from the f of x table and click on its matching point directly above it one six well to get from two to six you're multiplying by three which is the reason that there's a three right here. In fact, you could write this with that um, three times f of x notation, or you could just define the function as three times two to the x. They're both blue, I don't want them both to be blue. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna come over here and click on this and make it green. That's not visible. Orange, that's a little better, okay? So orange, blue, 
orange, blue. They are the same function. This up here is just a really nice way for Desmos to make the function notation and the transformations we can perform meaningful, okay? Um, I don't want to see that one though, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to press that circle. I'm going to click that circle. Make those dots go away. They're not gone from the sidebar over here. They're just not as visible. Now, what's something else that we can do to f of x? Let's see, we put a three times f of x. Let's add information. So I'm going to go down here. I need a letter. I need a letter. Uh, how about how about L? L of x equals f of x. Close it. There it is. They're the same function. But let's add a number. And because I want to kind of see on this, I'm going to add one. Wait. What do you think is going to happen? Where did I put the plus one? How will our two functions be different? I mean, there it is. That's how. So this coordinate right here at a height of 0, 1 has moved up to a height of 0, 2. And if I do that same trick by adding a table to the L of X, we can see that this Y coordinate of 1, 2 has shifted up to the Y coordinate on the other function, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5. So adding a 1 right here is a change to the x, uh, oh my gosh, flubbed it, y coordinate. Adding the one outside is a way that we take every y coordinate and add to it, add an amount of that number to make it go bigger. What else can we do to f of x? Okay, new function. Um, let's go n. n of x equals, it doesn't matter what letter you pick, just pick something. I'm gonna go f of x, there it is, we got it regraphed. I don't like the color and I want those points to go away, so table circle, and uh, let's go purple, all right? Maybe this is the last one that we do for this video, and then you can move on with your life. And thank you so much, okay? So let's say that instead of in or outside the f of x function, we add something to the inside of it. So I'm gonna say x plus, um, I've used a three, I've used a one, let's use a four, x plus four. Oh, I should have said pause and watch the video and tell me what you think. Yeah, that was, well, go back then. Delete this and go back, okay? So here it is. If you consider this coordinate right here of zero, one, it has a matching and corresponding coordinate four spaces to the left right here. Oh, there's some weird decimals there. Let's see if I can get accurate. There we go. Hovering and clicking, negative four comma one. So it still has the same Y coordinates, the same Y coordinate here and then over here. It's just because of the plus four, our purple function, purple n of x has been shifted to the left to the left four spaces x plus four we can see that if we graph the function two this is still the two to the x function right but up here surrounding x we put parentheses and then we put plus four and then there it is the blue function it's not it's gonna be super subtle on your screen i know but blue purple blue purple blue purple those are the exact same expression so there is really there's a couple more i need to share with you but i'll save that for another video because it's already long and thank you for watching this point there are three transformations so far that you need to know please get your practice in please do your online homework and do your book work and do your other research and watch other videos and talk to a neighbor and tutor someone else and tell a sibling who's not yet in algebra one how to do this and see if they can understand what you're saying pick that up capture all that for your evidence and let me see what you've got okay thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode